some holiday uh, dishes that are FODMAP friendly in this case, uh, and just showcase that you can still have a lot of fun with the menus uh, upon any dietary preference that you may be working around. Uh, we love you guys at Bastyr here at Down to Earth Cuisine. We um, actually just partnered with you uh, to develop a uh, partnership uh, to give you guys a place to come and learn and practical and real world uh, and have a job uh, with our meal prep service. So what we do here at Down to Earth Cuisine is mainly provide a weekly meal prep service for clients in the greater Seattle area. Uh, we're as far north as Everett now, and as far south as uh, Tacoma, North Bend, over to West Seattle, and then uh, everywhere in between. Uh, with our meal prep service, we work with our clients uh, based on their dietary preferences, needs, restrictions. A lot of our clients have, uh, you know, FODMAP diets that they're working with, or maybe they need help counting macros, or they're experiencing SIBO or any other dietary preference that you could possibly imagine, and they a, care about what they eat. So Uber Eats or DoorDash doesn't cut it anymore, um, or maybe they are just busy and they don't have time to cook for themselves, busy working professionals, you know, 2.2 kids and a half a dog, somewhere in there is our uh, most common demographic. Myself personally, uh, I've been cooking, um, since I was walking, I, yeah, I started walking, I grabbed a knife and started chopping onions ever since then and fell in love. And so, um, yeah, no, I spent 16 years in the restaurant industry. I moved here from Atlanta, went to school there, the Cordon Bleu, um, really invested, dedicated in my craft and learning more about technique. I would go to sleep and dream about searing shrimp and making some burr blanc sauce, and it's really weird and uh, over the top, but I, I love it. It's my craft. My wife is my total guinea pig, and this is our anniversary, and so as much as she says it's okay, and I know I'm going to hear about it for years to come, so um, <laughs> you're, you're, you're welcome for that, but no, we're, we're grateful to be here. So uh, spent, you know, years in the restaurant industry, moved out to Mazama, Washington, actually, uh, to work at a resort out there, the Freestone Inn. Had a friend I went to high school with that was a server out there. I was like, hey, we need a chef. Is this something you would be interested in? And I was like, why not? I've never been to the Northwest. And so that was about eight years ago. Uh, landed at night. Sun came up and fell in love immediately with the awe-inspiring beauty that is the uh, the playground that we get to call home and so forever grateful to be in this space. Uh, still worked in the restaurant space for a year and a half or so after moving out here. And then I just didn't find as much joy in the environment that I was in anymore. Working the nights, the weekends, the long late hours, uh, typically a toxic environment was not appealing any longer. My beautiful wife and I were engaged at the time and we knew we wanted a family. And so I wanted to do something where I could still do what I love in cooking, um, but in a more long-term sustainable approach. And also I wanted to get away from the garbage ingredients very commonly seen in the restaurant industry from GMO laden oils, products, pre-made dressings with ingredients you can't pronounce, farmed fish, uh, typically seeing a ton of waste, especially in the catering in the hotel. Uh, industry and, and I saw it firsthand. We would go and prepare this food and you have to prepare about 10% over so you don't run out of food and that's great and you know until you're making food for 400 people on a regular basis and then 40 at least meals come back and you have to throw it away at the end of the day. I thought it's just not good enough. It doesn't show the respect that it took to grow the food, to ship it, to prepare the food, to ship it to the venue, to ship it back to the, the kitchen, to throw it away, to ship it to some landfill. Uh, at the end of the day, it was just mind blowing um, the egregious amount of waste that's very commonly seen in that culinary industry. And so uh, I wanted to do something better. Um, 
I believe that food could be done better, it should be done better. And so at Down to Earth Cuisine, that's what we do. We are very environmentally focused. Uh, we donate a tremendous amount of um, our profit to planting trees through One Tree Planted, to removing plastic from the oceans through a company called the Dollar Donation Club. And then we donate meals both locally and um, internationally, as well as providing education on uh, how to grow and produce foods. Uh, so we're giving people a fish and teaching them how to fish at the same time. Um, and everything that we do at Down to Earth Cuisine is absolutely environmentally focused externally and internally. We work very hard to build out an amazing culture here where we put the needs of our team first over our paying clients, uh, benefits, uh, mental well-being program, uh, quarterly bonuses, paid time off. Um, we, we really invest into our team tremendously and we feel grateful for the women and men uh, rock star chefs that we have on board. We have 12 chefs now um, and we are an ambitious company. We're looking to grow tremendously. Uh, we're gonna be building out the delivery side of the business. Um, and then long-term we're building out a nonprofit, 100% organic, um, meals, 100% compostable packaging, as will the delivery be, and every meal that you buy feeds a family in need. So just a way to put food in the hands of millions of people is the ultimate long-term goal. So uh, that's a little bit about me. We're going to get our hands dirty, uh, see if we can't, uh, you know, burn ourselves a little bit. It's all for the love of cuts and burns, right? Um, and so today, uh, I believe I sent over a quick little kind of recipe. Uh, when I do recipes, I don't necessarily say, you know, 2.3 ounces of this. I'll give rough guidelines, but it's more on the technique behind it. So you can then go in and write your own recipes. Uh, I think I originally had halibut on there, but I went to the market today and they had some nice opa, which is a beautiful Hawaiian fish. It's actually sunfish, a very large uh, flatfish, and it's delicious and I couldn't resist myself. And if we had time, maybe something else uh, in store completely off the cuff. So uh, you guys ready? All right. Um, so we are going to get started with um, chart fennel puree. And these are all FODMAP friendly ingredients. We have our beautiful OPA. Uh, a white fish, mildly fatty, uh, mild texture, uh, very similar and interchangeable to halibut. Um, not quite as strong as maybe a sea bass on there. And then we have our Swiss chard and some celery just for a little texture in there. And so whenever we start a dish, we want to start with the item that's going to take the longest to cook. In this case, the charred fennel puree. So we're gonna walk through that. We'll come back to the other products. All right, let's talk kitchen equipment. Uh, I personally enjoy Japanese blades. Uh, this is a high carbon Fujiwara um, Japanese blade. You can get these pretty much anywhere as compared to a German still has a very narrow profile. So you can just as easily go through a piece of sashimi or sushi, as well as you could the head of cabbage. Um, the high carbon steel takes an edge really easily, holds it really well. When we talk about cooking equipment, um, I personally stay away from Teflon. Um, I, you know, it releases some funky chemicals whenever it gets to a high heat. In order for us to pan sear properly, we need to get to that high heat. Uh, so I stick with stainless steel or carbon steel, uh, which is kind of a more user-friendly um, cast iron kind of pan. So you're gonna get some great iron, you know, some minerals in your food as well. And it doesn't have any funky chemicals that go along with it. Uh, let's talk about some other kitchen equipment here. Uh, with our meal prep service and our private dinners, uh, we recommend all of our chefs as uh, these items in their kit and it's kind of you can take it anywhere and do anything you need to whether you're meal prepping for a family 
or cooking a wedding for you know 200. Um, stainless steel tongs. These are, I think, a Winco brand uh, that you can get on Amazon for like $6.99. And the entire um, tong is stainless steel, so you don't have to worry about leaving it too close to the burner and it melting or anything like that. Nor do you have to worry about the plastic tip that at some level could be melting into your food and you know, kind of weirds me out. Uh, this is a fish spatula, very narrow profile, very flexible. You can get these on Amazon as well for you know six bucks. And so the narrow profile allows you to get in up under the fish or product, whatever that may be, steak. Uh, and they also make a double up as a whisk, so a very versatile. I would say these two are my top two happy uh, pieces of equipment. And in fact, whenever we interview a chef, uh, we have a fun question. We say, if you could identify with any piece of kitchen equipment, what would it be and why? And it just gets people thinking, you know, and mine is always a fish spatula in my hands. Uh, this is a high heat silicon rubber spatula. We're only going to use this to scrape things out to not lose anything. Also, Amazon uh, wooden spatula. You can see this guy's, you know, had some love. Uh, it's been been around for a while. Uh, and this is what we're going to use to stir so that we're not um, imparting any funky chemicals, uh, even if it is a high heat silicon. This is what we're using to stir most of the time. Uh, the microplane, these are great to zest, uh, to grate garlic or ginger or anything that you want very finely uh, chopped, if you will. Old school peeler, looks like my grandmother gave it to me. Uh, these are great. And these are great for removing the pin bones out of fish. And I want to hold these up just so you can see. They're cute. They're actually little jewelry pliers, stainless steel, little bent nose there. And when you're pin boning a fish, there's nothing that comes close to these. The, uh, the fish pliers that, you know, every culinary school in America gives you, take them, throw them away, and get on Amazon, shocker, and look for jewelry pliers, stainless steel. Oh, and make sure they don't have the little teeth in there. A lot of times you'll see they have little ribs, and the pin bones of the fish will slip right through them if you get those. So make sure they don't have the teeth. Pro tip. All right, that's the kit. Literally have um, made anything from small intimate dinners all the way up to you know larger events with that, and um, be happy to send over that list uh, afterwards if uh, you would like us to. So, and then let's talk about pans. So these are the carbon steel pans. Oh, one other. Pieces of equipment here. Fine mesh strainer, right? Any sauces that you're going to make, super handy. We will use this today. And then Amanda Lynn. These guys are scary. This is a Beringer, B E R R I, uh, B E N R I N E R. And we're actually going to use this as well. Um, and they're just great for uniformity within a dish and making things look extra fancy, extra pinky up, because it gives it that refined touch. So, boom, add this to the list. So these are the carbon steel pans. Um, this is Lodge brand, and shocker, can you guess where I got it, right? Um, delivered to your front door, and these are super handy. They take heat really easily. They hold heat really well. So these guys, I'm going to use this. And this would be a five quart straight sided saute pan. You can see it's, you know, it's seen some love, it's seen some action there. Um, I like the straight sided saute pans, the curved sides that you can often see. Uh, they, the flame catches the lip and it scorches and it imparts a bitter flavor. So with the straight side, the flames can go up on the outside of the pan without um, you know, getting super funky. So there you go. One more thing. We had a we had a question. What what is the what? first set of what is the first set of pans made from again? The first set of pans made from it's a carbon uh, steel pan. So think it's just like a cast iron pan. Uh, these guys 
Uh, thank you know the, the cast iron pan um, that your grandmother used, except for this one doesn't weigh three thousand pounds, and you don't need a you know a forklift to to lift it up. So, cast iron pan basically is all it is, and it's you can see like it's thinner. I don't know if you can really tell, but it it doesn't weigh like seven hundred pounds, but it is the same material. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, that was going to be my my question was how much did it weigh? Does yeah. it do you clean it the same way you would a cast iron yeah. pan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It can rust. So you know, if you want to clean it, just a little oil, a little salt, as an abrasive and a towel, and just rub it around, and then pat it dry with a towel. Um, I don't really wash it with soap and water. You can just dry it back out so it doesn't rust because it will absolutely excellent thank you yeah thanks for grabbing me i am using my phone here on a little tripod and so any questions if you could just be like david and i'll stop what i'm doing and answer them to the best of my knowledge and if i can't figure it out i'll google it and let you know <laughs> well i will do thank you <laughs> <laughs> all right let's get this bill going Oh, and then, yeah, one more. Sheet trays, stainless steel sheet trays. Um, we also don't use aluminum sheet trays. Aluminum can be linked to Alzheimer's and other neurological uh, degenerative uh, diseases and, and such. So they make stainless steel sheet trays. Guess where I got them. And um, these are great as well. There we go. Thought the house ran out of gas for a second. All right, so fennel in its raw form has that kind of anise flavor, the licorice kind of flavor going on, which personally, I am not a fan of, and so uh, we're going to get rid of that by roasting it. And you'll see whenever you make this dish for yourself or your clients or your family, that once you roast fennel, it has a ton of natural sugars in the vegetable and it has this beautiful, beautiful sweetness to it, almost like a caramelized onion. Um, and it's a great substitute for anything FODMAP. If you're making a chili uh, or anything else that calls for onion, change it out with fennel. And once you cook it, it gets away from that anise kind of flavor, uh, that licorice flavor, which you know, not a fan of. All right, so we have the, the stalk here. We're just going to take the top and the bottom off as little as we can take out. We're going to slice it from north to south pole, leaving this beautiful half, beautiful vegetable. And then we want to leave it in wedges, so we're going to leave the core intact. So we have these nice little wedges that we're going to sear on all sides, uh, throw it into the oven. We're going to add a little stock. We actually have a better than bouillon stock that doesn't have any oleos, which is FODMAP friendly. And so once again, we're going to be pretty delicate with these pieces. A little oil into the pan. Dry towel. And that's it, pan's ready, olive oil in. One of the things you'll hear me talk about very often uh, that we go through with our chefs every day is working clean. Um, so you, you make food in a sloppy space, your food will be sloppy as well. So uh, we're clean, always clean up, clean up, clean up. So we're going to get this going. We're going to sear it on all sides. And let's get the fish out. Let's talk about that. All right. And also, I am going to get my oven going. It's already um, hot because I remember 
Uh, it's at 350, but just to speed things up a little bit, I'm gonna throw it up to 400. And I believe whenever I wrote the recipe, I wrote everything at 350. So if it says five minutes, take it down to three minutes. It's just a bit shorter of a time. <laughs> Boom, there we go. All right, Opa, uh, Google it. Beautiful, beautiful um, fish, delicious fish. You can see here we have the skin, and then we have a little bit of the dark red part, which is the bloodline, and it has a little bit of a, you know, I guess you could call it a gamier flavor, kind of a fishier flavor, so we're just gonna come in and take this little bit off. There we go. Oh, you can make a broth with that. And this actually has some pretty gnarly pin bones in there. So we're going to take that out as well. Use a little spoon, flip over the fiddle. And we're really just going to brown all sides there. And, um, and then we're gonna throw it in the oven. We got a little better than bouillon. I'm gonna wash my pork if I have the fish on it. Another thing I wanna talk about as well is anytime you want to sear your fish or any product, then um, it needs to be dry. So um, this, I had it wrapped in a paper towel just to pull away some of the moisture. And then normally I would always say have your fan on, but um, so I don't drown out the sound and the microphone. I'm gonna leave it off. So if it gets smoky in here, yeah. okay. All I think most of the time, whenever I season things, I just use salt. I don't use pepper that much. Salt enhances flavor. Pepper overpowers and changes flavor. And we just want to get some beautiful ingredients and let them shine. That's what we're going to do here with the fennel. I'm going to grab my bouillon. So you can get this. Uh, I think I picked this up at like Fred Meyers. And it does not have any onions or garlic. Um, and so it's uh, FODMAP friendly, but you could use any FODMAP friendly stock. You could totally throw in some fresh thyme here, um, throw in a pat of butter, just depending on um, your client's FODMAP level of severity. So, all right, I'm gonna have some water. We've got our color. All right, so really all we were going for here is color on the fiddle, and then we want to be gentle with it so that we don't break apart the steaks that we have. And the reason that we have them in these wedges as compared to just finally dicing it is we are able to get more of the browning without the fennel overcooking because it can tend to dry up a little bit. So, all right, and we want to add enough liquid to cover the fennel about halfway up. There we go. We'll add a spoon of our bouillon here. Optional. Could totally just do water as well. All right, doubles up as a whisk. Let's do everything together. Now we bring it back to a boil. 
because it comes up to a boil faster on the stove top than in the oven. It's done. Let's pop it in 400 degrees. All right, we're gonna leave that guy going. Um, now we're gonna get the rest of the dish prepared. We're always, anytime we deal with seafood, we're going to um, have everything else ready to go so that when that seafood is cooked on either side, it comes out and goes directly to the plate to, uh, to your mouth. Uh, it doesn't do well to sit around too long. It's not a steak. It doesn't need to rest too long. It can rest for a couple of minutes, but you essentially always want to have everything else ready to go. So we'll do that. We have our Swiss chard. Our stainless steel pan. And we are just going to uh, do a small dice on the celery. Uh, cut the chard, olive oil, salt, finish it with a touch of lemon. That's it, easy. You always want to go with organic anytime you have leafy greens. Uh, they are more commonly, more heavily sprayed with uh, the funky pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, because little bugs like to get in there and hang out in all those little nooks and crannies. And so it's on the dirty dozen list to you know, stick with pretty organic. Um, this could be kale, any kind of leafy greens. What I like to do is I cut the stems. Um, pretty small, so they cook faster. And then once we get out to the leafy green part, I'm gonna cut that a little bit larger with the idea that you know, a stem, because it's denser of this size and a leaf that's a little bit larger, in the end will cook around the same amount of time and one won't be overcooked. So boom, just a little bit of olive oil into the pan you go. While you're doing that, we have a question. What are some other good veggies to cook the same way you did with the fennel? I've never roasted my veg with broth before. Yeah, so I braised. Great question. Thank you for that. Um, I think treating vegetables with respect um, and just letting them shine in their own beauty, um, I think, takes more skill. I would say, in terms of um, braising vegetables, mm -hmm. anything that's dense. You know, uh, potato fondant, I know that's not FODMAT friendly, but would be another example of, you know, Yukon potato, you sear one side, you add some broth, some butter, some fresh thyme, and it kind of cooks it through. So anything more dense would be a good candidate for that so that you can get that Maillard reaction, the browning that you saw us um, get on the fiddle. And you can then cook it through delicately without overcooking it and drying it out. The purpose of braising is to introduce some liquid into the, the product, whether it was you know, pork or fennel or butternut squash or a potato, uh, anything that just needs more time in the pan and you don't want to dry it out. So. Uh, fennel is, is always kind of my go-to vegetable for that braising method. Uh, potatoes, um, I wouldn't necessarily do cauliflower that way. I think roasted cauliflower, you know, a nice big size pieces. Uh, it's not quite dense enough to need that additional liquid. Um, but some butternut squash would be great as, as well. Um, those would be my top two. That's great, thank you. Welcome. All right, more salt. Celery for texture. And 
and that's pretty much it. I think a lot of times it's easy to think that like I'm hard to cook the vegetables through so much, um, buy beautiful ingredients and do as little to them as possible, and you always make a big bite. All right, we've got a little lemon here. Squeeze it in right up there. All this again. And once again, we're just preparing this so that everything comes out at the same time. And so I'm kind of preparing this just like I would for a private dinner um, or any time or rather so that everything comes out at the same time. And what I did is I cooked the chard, uh, I seasoned it, I flavored it, the lemon, the salt, the celery done. I left the celery pretty al dente. You can see it was in there for, you know, what, 30 seconds. Now I would put it on a sheet tray, set it to the side. And whether this was dinner time, you know, with my family or a private dinner, then whenever I need to flash it in the oven, I just pop it in for 30 seconds, just barely warm it through. Done, you're good to go. Um, let's get the fish ready. And you also wanna have a pan that is appropriately sized for the product that you're working with. Uh, I'm just doing small portions here. And so uh, I have one portion of fish. Um, you could easily multiply by two, four, ten, you know, whatever number of portions you needed. Um, and so I have a smaller pan. If I were to use that same large stainless steel saute pan, it has too much negative space or pan space that's going to start to brown and pick up a bitter flavor. This guy is the perfect size for the fish that we're going to use. Um, and then let's see what time do we have? 7.06. We have 45 minutes or 55 minutes. Uh, do you guys want to see another dish? You want to do something else? Sounds good to me. Yeah, thought you never asked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to wash my pan. I'll be right back now. The, so the first dish, we're just really waiting on time right now. Um, and waiting for the fennel to uh, cook all the way through so it's nice and for tender. We're going to add a touch of cream, throw it in the Vitamix, turn it into a beautiful puree. Um, and then in the meantime, uh, if it's okay with you guys, then I'm going to start a scallops and mussel dish. I'm going to use that same puree um, and make it scallops, uh, some fresh pin cove mussels, um, some chipotle dusted popcorn, sliced radish, strawberries, pine nuts, so really just having some fun with it. How does that sound? Sounds great. Hey, all right. All right, I uh, went to Mutual Fish and I just, you know, that one looked good. These are some beautiful uh, U10 scallops. These are dry packed. These came out of the water today. Uh, I went down there and I grabbed them myself. That's coming with me. All right, these guys may have a little foot on them, as they're called, and that's just a tough piece of the scallop. Sometimes they have them, sometimes they don't. When they do, you come in and you clean them. And you send them to the side. So I'm now going to use this pan. I'm going to cook off my mussels. A little bit about these guys. They have these little beards, which is where they would attach to the rock and looks kind of gross and we just want to come in and rip that sucker off i've already washed these under cool running water for any you know, funky stuff on the outside and this is great actually anytime you see a muscle that's open just tap on it say hello is anybody home can you see how it closed up there it means it's alive it needs to open up and breathe if you tap on it and it doesn't close, throw it out. You don't want any part of that guy. So, the rest of these look pretty good. Real quick rinse. Now, if you were to prepare these ahead of time, you can rinse them in 
fresh water, but they are a saltwater animal. And if they live in fresh water, it will kill them. So rinse them, drain them out in a bowl, just like that. Boom. And we're just gonna cook these off until they open up and reserve them, kind of like we've done with the chili. So here we go. So this is actually a, a B and B kitchen. Um, I just rented this out because it has this island stove. We actually did a video shoot for the uh, the website yesterday, an internal training video, plus a few videos for the external website as well. So we were in here rocking and rolling all of yesterday. Uh, I'm gonna check on my fiddle. I'm gonna put the scallops back away for now. Smells great. And we're just checking to see if it's pork tender. Almost there, not quite. You can still see <coughs> excuse me, the browning is going on. And that's kind of what it looks like halfway through. Walk, smell that. How's it smell? <laughs> All right, let's check our muscles. We're going to the gym. And once they pop open just like this, that's all we're looking for. You can see that. Boom. That's all we want. They can very easily get overcooked themselves. You don't want that. A uh, few are still not open. All right, does everybody have their holiday shopping done? You guys, planners? I got a um, few more to do, a few more things. Yeah, All right. <laughs> you and me both. I, I, yeah, I'm going to tell the last minute shopper. <laughs> I go and something calls my name. I'm like, oh, that's the one. I spend five minutes in the store, but usually what I get is great and everybody loves it. And my wife is like, how the hell do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this guy is opened up here. Oh. So these that have opened, we're just gonna come in and remove some from the shell. We're gonna leave a few in the shell because they look beautiful and why not? And this is really the whole point of it is get this beautifully, perfectly cooked muscle that's gonna be almost this. And these guys, and if you've ever had uh, muscles, which I'm sure you have, they, when they get overcooked, they start to shrink and shrink, and you get the shell, and it's got this tiny little bitty muscle in there, and you're like, what happened? 
do you ever check the food temperature of the of the mussels or you just kind of go by if they're open in the shell like with a thermometer yes um the only indicator i ever use of whether or not a muscle is done or not is when it opens um also whenever we started we wanted to make sure they all closed that's a sign of life if you cook them and you cook them and you cook them and it doesn't pop back open that means it's a dud throw it out that would be the indicator that i would recommend to you is it's closed before you cook them even if it was open like one was and you tapped on it it's just breathing and it closed up slowly right uh any that you tap on and they don't close throw them out you don't want to mess around with shellfish but it's not um it's still good even this guy right here and so you can see it's like barely open right and that's that's borderline it's fine but if it didn't open up any more than that and in fact for the sake of all argument we're just gonna let that guy go swim with the fishes again um, and not chance it because you do not want to mess around with muscles once again. Um, all right, this guy, so this is now a beautiful broth that we've made. It's a muscle, chipino base kind of thing going on. Smells great. Um, and we're gonna use it in our fennel puree here. So boom, we washed our pan and now I'll dry towel and I'll turn it back on the heat. If I were done at the end of the day, I would just dry it off and it's ready to go in store. Just as long as you dry it off. Good. All right, so we've got the mussels hanging out. We've got the Swiss chard hanging out. I am guessing I feel it's pretty close. I'm going to build out clean as you go. I'm going to make a little um, celery and apple salad for the scallops dish. And then we'll come back into the fennel. We'll pull it all together. You've got an appetizer and a main course. All right. I like Granny Smith for this dish because it's tart and I, and I didn't necessarily want the sweetness to be sweet to the apple, so I wanted the tart Granny Smith. I'm gonna open up our mandolin. Gonna be careful of our fingers, say a prayer, and hope that we come out with you know, 10 fingers and 10 toes after this. So, I'm just, I'm just going slow using an open palm. Um, you can also use, you know, the sides and go at your own pace. You can make these beautiful little shingles that are uniform and delicious. Now that we have these little shingles, you can come in and make julienne cuts. Boom, and they're all beautiful little same size matchsticks because we use that mandolin. Save a little bit of the celery. We're going to cut it on an extreme bias here. It's going to give us a crunch, some texture, some nice flavor. Clean as we go, pull a knife. And Add a little lemon. Just 
salt. We are all set. And we've got the celery heart, the very center of the celery. And we're just going to harvest some of these beautiful, very delicate, tender little leaves for some color. All right. And some of these fennel fronds as well. They're very beautiful. This is unrelated to the cooking itself but what do you have um what are you using for your demo is it like your camera is it a is it a no phone. phone yeah how do you have it all set up a uh, tripod with a little studio light that has just a little phone attachment to it very cool very cool easy lowest hanging fruit <laughs> distance but like i said yesterday we had a videographer in here that had like the setup, the the whole nine in here, um, but it's just me today. It's all you get. Well, I feel like you can see everything really well, so it, it's yeah, working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, boom! We've got our mussels, we've got our chard, we've got our mise en place ready to go. Right, mise en place French for everything in place. So we've got everything ready, done to rock and roll, and. Um, a mandolin, some radish as well, and I'm just kind of playing around with some flavor, some color, some texture. How do you know what setting to put it on for the mandolin? Um, it's just as thick as I want it. Yeah, okay. I wanted the other thin slices. This has a little set pin, set screw on there. The more you open it, the wider the gap is. Or to close it, the narrower it is, and the thinner the slices. Gotcha. And I just wanted some nice thin slices because they're cute. All right, boom, done. So I'm just gonna put this in the same bowl. It's all raw, ready to eat veggies. And scallops, the mussels. Let's check that fennel. Let's see how we're doing. All right, this, my friends, is exactly what you're looking for. Uh, use your hands when cooking. Uh, you want it to be soft to the touch. Still have a little firm, a little bite, a little al dente, if you will, to it. Let me bring this over. So what this did, once again, can you see it? Yeah. Is it allowed us to brown it off, um, to continue the browning in the oven and not to dry out because fennel can definitely tend to dry out so now and you could totally serve these just as beautiful like fennel steaks this by itself delicious like you don't need to do anything else to this put it on a plate serve it with some scallops with some fish as is we're going to turn it into a puree because why not um but yeah braised fennel Try it. It's it's really good. Really, really good. All right. Cool. The king, the Cadillac of blenders, the Vitamix, except no substitute. Uh, I carry this everywhere I go. Uh, lives in my garage or in my car. So we're just going to go in. We want that delicious braising liquid. just rinsed it off, put it back onto the heat. The handle's screaming hot, so just be mindful of that and don't burn yourself. I'm gonna add some of our beautiful broth. We cooked the mussels in and a little heavy cream. Now in my experience with FODMAP, some people can and some people can't have 
uh, cream, but this is assuming that they can. You can add a pinch of salt. You can add a little a few drops of truffle oil in here. Wouldn't be bad at all. And um, so I preserve all of your eardrums. I'm going to mute this for a second because a Vitamix sounds like a jet engine when it's taking off. So one second, and you can just you know visually see this one. What if I forgot to unmute it and started talking? Uh, all right, this is why you want a vitamin. Um, you know, other blenders will do. Um, blend Tech is great. Um, a little Nutribullet will still work. But this gets really that beautiful silky consistency that we're doing for. And now we have. A nice little pot to just keep this warm. And all we did was blitz it. We start out on low and we rev it up um, to high, blitz on high for 45, 60 seconds until velvety smooth. Taste everything, make sure the salt level is there. Good. The mussels added a little extra like ocean water briny flavor going on. All right, let's cook some fish. So now to recap, we have the chard done, just hanging out. Uh, whenever the fish is cooking, we're gonna pop it back in the oven just to warm it back through. The fennel puree is in a little sauce pot on the stove on the lowest possible setting, just so it stays warm as well. You could just put a lid on it, put it off to the side, and it would totally be fine as well. I recommend that you have a fish spat for this. We're going to preheat our pan. Get rid of this guy. Actually. This one is a better size for the one piece of fish. And we're not going to season our fish until just before it goes into the pan. And then how do we know when our pan is ready? And what oil do we use? You can totally use olive oil in every cooking scenario other than deep frying, but it's 2022, nobody deep fries anymore anyways, right? Um, how do you know when it's ready? So, boom, we're just gonna throw the oil into the pan. And as soon as it quickly runs across the pan and has little streaks, uh, similar to what you would see in a glass of wine, the legs that are running down the side of a glass of wine. Uh, and once it gets there, I'll pull it over so you can see it. Uh, that's when you know it's ready. You don't want it to quite come to the smoke point um, because once oil hits its smoke point, it changes the chemical composition and then becomes not so good for you. So 
Uh, fish is about ready to go in. We're going to season. We're going to sprinkle from high above so we evenly coat. We want top, bottom, all sides. You can totally add some fresh chopped thyme, some lemon zest. Wouldn't be bad here at all either. And we're almost there. Let it do its thing. So typically, how I like to cook fish is sear it on one side, flip it, pop it in the oven to finish it through. All right. So I don't know if you can see the little streaks running across. This is you know, stretching the the boundaries of the zoomiverse, but there we go, and it's actually started to come to that smoke point. I don't want to waste anything. Always cleaning as we go. And so fish back, we're going to push the piece of fish or chicken or steak products down against the pan. This is going to allow us to get that deep, deep sear the even sear all the way across. It's a hot pan, the fish wants to pull away from it. And I say, nope, I'm the boss, you're not going anywhere. All right, we're looking on time, 7.30. We have 30 minutes to pull it all together and to eat um, and save some time for some questions. Uh, a lot of times I will also, um, if it's a thinner piece of fish, like sockeye salmon or something like that, I won't even flip it. And the thought process there is you'll have this nice deep, deep sear on one side, and then the rest is nice and delicate and you flip through it with a knife. Uh, you'll see me do that a lot of times with scallops as well. Uh, so you saw me take it away from the pan. It got a little bit hot, so I just wanted to let it cool off a little bit. And how do you know when it's ready to flip? The million dollar question. It will let you know when it's ready to flip. If you go and you try to move the fish and or the product and it doesn't want to budge, leave it alone. It's not ready to flip. When you try to flip it, even with a nice fish spatula, you're going to rip it. So one thing you can do to make it pull away from the pan, throw it in the oven. And we haven't flipped it yet at all. There you go. That surrounding heat will actually uh, pull the edges up and start to pull the piece of fish or product away from the pan. All right, little pro tip, uh, get your plate and when you're about a minute out, just throw it into the oven just to warm it through. Put hot food on a cold plate. It's not gonna be hot when it gets out to the guest. And the guest could be your you know, 15 year old screaming teenager and you want them to be happy so you have a you know, happy life. All right, so I'm gonna pop this in. I'm gonna throw in my Swiss chard. It's cooled off a bit. Uh, I don't use oven mitts, I just use a dry towel. It's my old restaurant, you know, self coming out. So dry towel, water conducts uh, heat. And if you use a towel that you've been cleaning up with, You'll find out very quickly that that towel is wet when you try to take that hot handle out of the stove. Now we put it into the stove or into the oven without flipping it. When we take it back out, we always want to go back out onto a super hot surface so it doesn't cool off and stick. There we go. Little extra nugget. Good. This is just a little piece that flaked off. You don't want to get rid of that guy. Dry towel and the fish spatula. See how easily it just goes up under the piece of fish. Use your hand, be delicate with it. 
got a nice, beautiful golden brown sear. You can hear it sizzling. There we go. We're going to pop it back in for another minute. And quite still, you know, it's warm. It's not so hot that it's going to cook the product any longer, but it's also not going to take away the heat uh, that you imparted into your dish. Does it matter the material that the plate is made of? So be it fine china or stoneware or porcelain for what would go in an oven at what temp? Most all plates, even china, are made to uh, go into an oven. And we're really, we're not leaving it in there long enough so that it, uh, it cooks and it, you know, breaks is, is what you would be concerned with, um, but just to warm it up. So it went from room temperature, what, 70 degrees up to 100 degrees. Um, what I personally put, if I went to a private dinner, somebody's beautiful grandmother, you know, their grandmother's china in the plate or in the oven, Probably not, you know, it kind of like ugh, scares me a little bit. Um, but most plates, yeah, I think, and especially all of your new china, it's made to be dishwasher safe as well. All right, Swiss chunks. Opa, done. You can totally tempt this. Let me show you guys a trick. Shocker. Um, I want to take this off of the heat. I'm going to let it rest a little bit. And I'm going to show you a cool little trick to tell the doneness of product. And to clean it, because I'm going to use it again for the scallops. Dry towel. That's all you would ever need to clean it. You don't even need soap and water. You're ready to go. All right. This is the million dollar trick right here. Um, this is how you can tell if something is medium rare, medium, medium well, well done, universal for any protein. Uh, take your pointer finger, put it on the, your thumb. Don't squeeze it, just put it together. Now take and push your, the pad of your palm there. That's medium rare. Okay, that doneness, that level of resistance that you're feeling. Um, now take the next finger over, your middle finger. Once again, you're not squeezing, you're just putting it together. See how it gets a little more firm? That's medium universally. Next finger over, the ring finger. See how once again gets a little bit more firm? That's medium well. And then you guessed it, well done, even more firmness. So what I do, and I think most restaurant chefs, is we just feel it. This feels pretty uh, medium well, almost even to well done to me. We're gonna test it, we're gonna break into it and see exactly how it looks. So, uh, we're done, let's play. All right, I'm gonna get some more spoons here. I'm gonna wash mine. One of these days, if I make it big, I'll have an official spoon washer for themselves. All right, nice warm plate, not hot. And we're just going to do a nice little fun swoosh. We've got our charred fennel puree. I'm going to put a couple of spoonfuls onto the plate, wipe the back of the spoon, make a little Nike symbol, a little curved swoosh here. And. Got our Swiss chard, the celery. We're gonna make it into a compact little ball. And our Opa fish. This little guy, you know, keep it away. Uh, I don't love it. And then some little slices of radish on here uh, because why not? And we got these cute little edible flowers from PCC. They're beautiful. And these are edible, so no worries there. 
we'll take a few of the petals, just drop them down and see what happens. All right. So we have our hand seared Opa Swiss chard celery chard fennel puree, 100% FODMAP friendly. Uh, it'll knock anybody's socks off that you want it to. And let's do the big reveal. Let's see how done it is. Oh, a little, a little rare in the middle. Could uh, still use a little more time. If you can see, that's kind of a medium rare. Uh, I like fish kind of medium rare. You could totally take it a little longer if you would like to. And then you can put it back on there and act like you meant to cut it in half the whole time. So there you go. All right. All right, let's cook some scallops now, shall we? So how many virtual cooking demos do you do as a cooking demo of one? Uh, I do a lot of cooking demos for uh, Wolf Sub-Zero. Uh, they have a showroom up uh, in Lower Queen Anne, and so I do demos uh, often. They actually, for the past year and a half, they've done a complete remodel of their kitchen. Uh, I was in New York last year. I actually did uh, kind of a lower budget cooking show, a full season of that on the art of plating and everything to do with it. Um, and every, although I do dinners uh, rarely now, because I've got an amazing cast of, of chefs, I maybe do about four dinners uh, a year. But it's it's my happy place. You know, I could I could do this all day every day and, and just having a good time while I'm doing it. So. Demos, I used to do a lot more. Now I'm just more involved with uh, growing the company and the marketing and building out the website and all those things. So less now. Excellent. All right. Let's throw our hot pan back on the heat. Crank it up. Although for you guys, anytime. Well, I'm enjoying it. I hope all the attendees are as well. I know it's just a little weird in this virtual space where you can't yeah. see anyone's faces. And <laughs> I know. But we're I here. Know. We're here. <laughs> I've got the home screen. So all I see is the Greater Seattle uh, Diet. <laughs> and then Jenny Hunt. And that's it. And I've got Rick Harrison as a, a black screen. So I'm just going to scroll over and see some faces. Hi, everybody. Hi. Oh, cool. Um, fire throwing Celine Van. You are the official badass of the group now. Um, that is awesome. Um, yeah, I, oh, hi, it's Spaces. Hi. Thank you, everybody. Uh, what a gift. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, I enjoy the in-person, you know, the interactions, uh, just having fun with it. Um, but the Zoomiverse, Ooh, the camera almost dropped. Uh, it works. All right, scallops, here we go. And look at this, this is definitely one of those like pinky up, tiny little portions. You get two scallops, that's it. Uh, you can see our pan starting to smoke. It's ready to go, add a little oil. Salt it right before it goes. Same thing, push it down into the pan. All right. The mussels. Uh, I like these little stainless steel bowls, and I have like a huge stack of them for any dinners because now we've got the mise en place ready to go. And I'm just going to pop it back into the oven just to warm it through, just like we did with the Swiss chard. It doesn't need much. It's cooked. We're just, it's, you know, room temperature now. We're bringing it back up. Awesome, awesome, awesome. salad that we made.
fennel puree, still hot. And we're just gonna have some fun with some colors, some textures, some flavors here. We're gonna grab some strawberries. You might be thinking, what the heck are you doing with strawberries? But trust me, uh, I think it worked. I've never made this before. Uh, so we'll see. Take the bottoms off here. class on, on knife skills because I, I don't think I could cut my strawberries like that. <laughs> What's that? I said I need a class on knife skills because I couldn't cut my strawberries like that. <laughs> sharp knife. That helps. Um, that's the sharp knives are safer, right? A dull knife you try to do that, it drags the piece of product with you and you know a finger with it. You know, who knows? Um, all right. Now let's push them down. And you could use you know, your hand, just seeing how easily it pulls away from the pan. Right now it's stuck, it doesn't want to release from the pan. So if you're the boss, I'm gonna just leave you alone. I'm gonna warm my plate through. Totally would be a beautiful time to add a little pat of butter here. You can butter paste it, um, but I don't have butter, so I'm not going to. So, so you can do that for, that. Um, I'm sorry, any any kind of protein you can do that for, right, in the pan? Like, oh, yeah. just kind of wait and see if it'll move on its own. Because I always have that issue where, like, I turn it too soon and then, like, yeah. stuff sticks on the bottom of the pan and it's all messed up, so. Yeah, that I would say is a very common thing. People get antsy and they want to just like, oh, you're going to do what I say. And it sticks. It doesn't get any sear on it. Um, when rather just let, let it do its thing. So tell me a bit more, if you wouldn't mind, about the, um, the Dietetics Association. What do you guys do there? Jeannie, do you want to take this one? Sure, happy to. Um, hey, I'm Jeannie. I'm the president of the GSDA right now. Um, so um, thanks for bearing with me. I had my my daughter was eating her dinner. I was I've been cooking something oh, else. <laughs> I love it. But um, so the Greater Seattle Dietetic Association. We're here to represent the dietitians in the Seattle area. We're here okay. to advocate for dietitians as the nutrition experts um, for specifically for this area, but really just in general. Um, and we are here to um, also just advocate for the health of the community uh, through nutrition and um, kind of nutrition as medicine. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are rock stars. There's so many people, you know, who are out there saving lives. And I don't, I don't say that lightly. But we, we touch on the same kind of demographic and people need to be able to, to know that they can just live a normal life without having to worry about what they eat on a regular basis. That's going to, at best, put them in the bathroom all day. At worst, put them in the hospital. And so you guys are changing so many lives and adding so much value. So, you know, you guys are, you should have a tin for sure. Thanks so much. appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. All right. All right, so stove's off, oven is off. See what fun we can, uh, or trouble we can get right in here. All right. I'm going to start with some of the mussels. Left some in the shell. Give them a toss in their own brine. 
merchandise and support the Jews we still we're in the fall, we're in May. Let's pour a little bit of that brine back in here. This guy's trying to escape like me. The brine. Boom. <coughs> Scallops. I'm going to call it to cut one in half. There's my nuts. Just going to place that onto the plate. There we go. Clean, clean, clean. And then, yes, it's freaking popcorn. So this is for a textural difference. Um, I didn't have any because it's a B and B, but totally some chipotle chili dusted on there would be a fun little spice. It's gonna uh, offset the sweet of the scallops, the sweet from the strawberry as well. And then we just want to build little moments of interest on the plate. And we have our. Apple salad that we built, some radish. There we go. That's some beautiful fennel. I'm just gonna lightly let it just casually drop so nothing looks contrived and deliberately placed. I just gonna let it fall. We have a comment that says, I appreciate all the clean as you go. Definitely yes. something I could work on when I cook. Yes. The only way in the training video that we did yesterday for our meal prep service was the most common thing that I mentioned. And the only way you make food that is amazing, you know, take this out of it, but in general, the way to make amazing food is working clean. If you work sloppy you make sloppy food if you work clean you make clean food um i remember that definitively changed for me um i worked at a really fun place in atlanta uh, we were voted best new restaurant atlanta 2013 by bon appetit best new restaurant america by esquire magazine that same summer we were doing a lot of fun stuff there and the executive chef there was not so nice about having our station clean. It would be, you know, one of those classic, like you see on TV or the movies or whatever sort of personalities. Get your, you know, together and clean your station or get off the line. We're like, oh, we're good. Okay. And, um, and that was a clearly defined moment in my career that I can remember where my food went from like, eh, to maybe slightly better. I'm not saying it's great by any means, but it was a defining moment in my career that I look back on. And ever since then, if my station, like this right here, uh, is, is jacked up, and if my station isn't clean, I can't function. Um, I'm sure my wife would appreciate that same level of dedication to my sock drawer at home, but in the kitchen anyways, uh, it has to be clean. Uh, and you have to work clean. You have to work as you go and clean as you go rather otherwise your the food that you produce is not going to be uh, special at all so a few little dollops of the sauce call it good some olive oil that's my knot a little salt to finish it and there you go, that plate is kind of warm. So we have, this is just completely ad lib. As you can see, what, but uh, pan seared scallops, uh, mussels, charred fennel puree um, with a little fennel and apple salad. Uh, $39.99 at any restaurant. There you go. <laughs> that looks beautiful. Thank you so much. 
All right, uh, we have a few minutes left here. I, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you so much for, for your time, for your attention um, on this, what is it, a Wednesday night, getting close to the holidays. I, I know, Jenny, you mentioned some kids running around. We have a three-year-old and a 20-month-old, so I get it. I know your time is precious, and so I am grateful for yours. Uh, any questions that I can answer, I'm happy to do so. Well, we're definitely grateful to you for sharing your knowledge with us. Um, I'd say if anyone wanted to ask a question or have any, just any comments, now we have some comments, which we could be there in person, smell like looks good. Um, but yeah, just feel free to come off mute or put your video on and, and uh, share what you'd like to, to share. Um, I had a quick question, just because I'm kind of learning to um, make fish more. I used to, I went, I didn't eat fish for many years and then I started eating it anyway. So um, is that like a good universal mes method for making fish that you kind of showed that like sear on one side, put it in the oven, sear on the other side, put it in the oven? And what yeah. temperature was the oven at? Uh, generally, you could always say 350. And then you're going to go for the, the, the test, get you a thermometer. I would actually say if you took um, nothing else away from here, use this little test and then test it against the barometer of a thermometer a probe thermometer, you want to get the fish up to like 125 and then see, squeeze it, touch it, feel it uh, exactly how it feels. But yes, that is a universal method for any protein, chicken, pork, steak, halibut, salmon, sea bass, whatever. Yes, that, that method totally works. And I will... I'm on mute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi there. Um, yeah, we just have comments. Thank you so much. Wonderful demonstration. This was great. So full of tips. Thank you for your time. Really love the demo. So we are very pleasure. appreciative. Pleasure. Yeah, my my pleasure to uh, hopefully add a lot of value that you can go and uh, spread some love into the world and you know make somebody's day that much more special because of the love. I say. Cook cleanly and cook with love. It's you know, the, the oldest saying in the book, but it's so true. Whenever you cook, and I think what you guys do there with adding value to people's lives, that's already coming from a place of servitude, of love, uh, and it shows in the food. You know, if you're, you know, pissed off, then stay home that day. You know, get yourself in a good mood. It's all about the state that you're in uh, whenever you, you go client-facing. And uh, another, a shameless plug, go check us out, downearthcuisine.com. We have our careers page on there. We are actively hiring. Uh, we'll help you, um, you know, in whatever step along the journey to whatever dream that you have, we'll help you to achieve that. We've had quite a few people that have came through uh, looking to start their own business, wanted to learn from the best. I gotta, you know, I gotta be a little biased there. <laughs> um, but we'd be happy to serve in any way that makes sense for sure. Awesome. Thank you. And we had another comment. Thank you. Lovely food and great teaching. My excitement for kitchen utensils has been reunited or sorry, <laughs> reignited as well. Yes. Kitchen gadgets, they're the best. Um, oh my gosh. I totally nerd out on them on knives, <laughs> like. My wife's like, really? You got another one? I'm like, yes, this way a month, I'll get another one. Um, exactly. So yeah. I feel that. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I work, and I would oh. add too, um, hopefully, I know I did the two different dishes here and um, trying to, you know, squeeze in as much value as possible, but with the seared fish and the Swiss chard and the fennel puree, does that feel like something you guys could all take home and tackle? I, I hope that I was able to add uh, enough value that you can just take it and, you know, make it for all your friends. It seemed easy enough to do. I'm, I'm sure everyone else feels similarly. Awesome. And it's a rock star dish. Um, and then I sent in, I definitely want to make the seared fish super super easy approachable uh i sent in the recipe for that did you guys get that i sent out the recipes that i will double check make sure that they were all the same ones but yeah whatever recipes we had we emailed out to the attendees yeah and that was for the uh the chard and the fennel curry and the fish so cool well thank you again i'm going to share my screen as we wrap up here um and just we did that one 
Uh, I don't know if there's any more. Nope, nothing else there. Sorry, it's in this weird format. Um, but thank you again for being with us today. Thank you for the attendees for attending. Um, we do have a meeting in January, the very end of January, last Tuesday in January, we're going to be doing a nutrition advocacy meeting and we are hoping for a fun and interactive and engaging event um, with different rooms and a passport style um, kind of touring around for different advocacy topics. So we're working on it. Stay tuned and more information will be coming. Um, we'll also send out the CE certificates for your attendance today um, within the week. Um, and again, I thank you for attending and I thank you uh, as as well, Chef Boyd, um, for your time, especially on your anniversary. So you can tell your wife we appreciate it. So thank you very much. You. <laughs> Pleasure. All right, and, guys. And that is all for us. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Recording stopped.